For today's episode of Florida Roadside Attractions, we come to the Florida State Fairgrounds in Tampa to celebrate Christmas the old-fashioned Cracker way. It's Christmas in the country at Cracker Country. I have entered the MLK entrance to the fairgrounds. Looks like I'm gonna pay for parking here. 10 bucks a car. Just follow the signs right there, check it out. Cracker Country, gate two. Actually gate two is that one right there. All parked up, two oak trees there, one oak tree here, entrance over there. We'll get there in a second. Let's officially start this video. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if it's your first time. Howdy, I am Tampa J. Fired up the camera to do the intro and I couldn't help, but check this out. That looks like a duck, doesn't it? The shape of that tree right there. That angle precisely, it looks like some kind of a bird, maybe a dinosaur. Just had to document that right there. Again, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm celebrating Christmas the old fashioned way at Christmas in the country at Cracker Country. Now let's, let's set this up properly. What is Cracker Country? Well, it is a living history pioneer museum, a historic village of the 1800s Florida that sits right here at the Florida State Fairgrounds. Now there's only two times a year the public can access this village. One being today, for Christmas in the country, and two, during the entire two weeks of the Florida State Fair, which is in January, late January, every single year. Today, one day only, it's typically the second weekend of December, the Saturday, which is today, December 9th, Saturday, Christmas in the country, a pioneer Christmas opens up. So this is one of two days that you can come out here for the public. Now, that being said, if you grew up in the Tampa Bay area, if you were a youngling, you may have taken a field trip out here. I did not grow up here, so I didn't have that privilege. But back home in Indiana, we had a similar thing called Connor Prairie, and they used to do Christmas events as well. So, familiar with this, I've uh, done something like this before, and I've actually been to this event five years ago in 2018 and I absolutely loved it. And I can't believe it took me this long to come back out here and experience it again. I kind of know what I'm getting into. I read online, some things have changed. You're gonna see a lot of historic buildings today. You're gonna see demonstrations. You're gonna see people making wax candles. You're gonna see a blacksmith. You're gonna see train stations, general stores, real life pioneer history, cracker history, Florida crackers as they call them. You're gonna see that today in this video. We're going back to the Victorian era in the rural Florida 1800s, which that's always fun. I love history. It's a huge part of this channel, especially the roadside attraction series. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Happy holidays. I'm here a little early. We're gonna fire up the camera. You're just gonna see it as we go. The camera's already fired up. I don't know what I'm saying. That's so cool. And then take a screenshot. It'll last longer. It looks like a duck. All right, here we go. There's much ahead, my friends. Let's head into Cracker Country. Yeehaw. Cracker Country, reliving rural Florida's past. I like this logo here. So I got here a little early. It doesn't open till 10. It is about 9.30, it goes till 4 p.m. This is an old sign here that permanently sits here pointing the way. You can make out some of the old buildings, the roofs right here. Cracker Country is right here gate two that's where we will enter i paid 14 dollars ahead of time for a ticket as soon as the gates open much ahead here we go and inside the main gate through that fence check it out there's a little backup they just opened everyone's trickling in i think we scan our tickets right there to the right all right so all checked in there's the entrance over here there's several vendors we've got a pizza vendor we've also got different things down there we'll take a look after we experienced Cracker Country, but this is the main entrance. They handed me this map. There are 13 plus buildings, but 13 of them are original buildings from the 1870s up until 1912 is the latest of the structures. This is a big <laughs> complex. We're gonna explore everything you see on this map right here. Mildred W. E. Ann Doyle, E. Carlton Jr., Cracker Country, Rural Florida, living history 
museum. This is the boardwalk that leads right down into it. Hopefully we'll see some live entertainment today just like last time. Check this place out. Welcome to old Florida, folks. This is real Florida. That's the old Okahumpka train station. It was moved here from Okahumpka, way up in central Florida. We're gonna take our time and walk through this place. Several buildings to my left, all the way down. At the end, there's a general store. There's some history right here on these signs. I remember reading these. Some cool fun facts here. Robert May first wrote the story of this red-nosed reindeer for a coloring book sold at Montgomery Ward in 1939. And here's one of my favorites. Merry Christmas, the phrase Dickens novel, A Christmas Carol, influenced many aspects of Christmas, such as family gatherings, seasonal food, and drink, dancing, games, and a festive generosity of spirit. The phrase Merry Christmas was popularized following its appearance in the story, 1843. That's why we say Merry Christmas. So, one by one, we're gonna explore Cracker Town today. I think we'll start with the old Okahumpka train station. There's a cool train set inside. Now, the Christmas decorations you will see today are of the time, of the 1800s. We've got palmettos, we've got little berries, we've got red and uh, white twine there. This is all decorated authentically of the era. Check it out back before they had Christmas lights. That's very neat, isn't it? All the way up, they use the palmettos and this like berry plant here, it's very cool. Also, they've kind of set it off with the red kerosene lanterns. So many doors open, but we're gonna go through the door that says entrance, check this out. All right, wood burning stove even. Looks like we have some actors in here. And in this room, there's an old photograph of this very train station sitting That's right. in its original spot. All right, so here is the train set. I've been invited to go behind the scenes. This gentleman right here is gonna help me. Thank you so much. Just walk down there. Walk down this way? Look at this Fire. thing. Who's gonna get a video? All right, yeah, thank you very much. I'm gonna go up there and get a view of this for you. Catching it through the tunnel right here. Just came out of the tunnel. So check this out, look at all these controls. This is where the conductor of the miniature train set. Look at all the tracks here, this is where they conduct. Here you go, I'm gonna go slow. Look at this, it's a whole entire town. It's a Beetlejuice reference. It's amazing, that looks like a phosphate plant out there. Wow, goes all the way the length of the train station. I even see a lot of movement in there, especially in the horse corral there. I'll zoom in in a second. Here comes the train, or there goes the train. There's two of them going. Toot toot, toot toot, toot toot. Here we go. I could literally sit here all day and watch these little trains. I used to love to do that when I was a kid. Love doing it. Into the tunnel. There it goes. Gone. At first I thought that was like a phosphate plant. I think that's a citrus plant. That would make sense, Florida citrus. And on the front side of this area I was just showing up there, it says the original 1890s Flatbush County Fair. Come one, come all. Balloon accession daily, horseshoe pitching, parachuting, and exhibits. I see a quilt show going on there. I see a Apple Annie's Baking Goods, Crazy Kate's Kettle Corn. This is really neat, here comes the train. <laughs> it is a beautiful day out here. It is 76 degrees, a perfect day to celebrate Christmas in the 1800s. I love how this building is decorated. We're gonna check it out. It says the Rural Print Shop right there on that sign. Cracker Country Chronicle. Christmas decorations, they've got these berries. Got some more berries here. They've used like newspaper to make fans. They've got rope, they've got bows, they've got citrus. Deck the cabin for the holidays. And some history before I walk in. This is Anne Dupree Murphy and James Henry Murphy and their nine children. They actually uh, use this house that we're going into right now, which is a current print shop, as a cookhouse. That's them right there, and this would have been in the uh, 1890s. So here, they put a keyboard on it. Well, right away, 
you can type five times as fast as you can pick. Productivity exploded. So what comes down here is, I don't know the, the real term, I call them negative letters because they're recessed and we need something raised to pick up the ink. So this is for proofreading. So you proof it, say, okay, that's good. You shift it to this side of the machine and you hit a lever and pour hot lead on it and it gives you a line of type. I'm just waiting my turn here. It looks like we will be permitted to walk on the front porch of this post office and just take a peek in. I do remember last time I did get inside here. I like this old buggy back here in the background. Check this out. So I'm waiting my turn. Oh, gotcha. I believe that's an old coupe. On the sign there, it says doctor's buggy. A rural doctor would drive that. Paraphrased it. Also decorated for Christmas, Green Swamp, Florida, up on the porch. Let's take a peek inside. Oh yes. We've got the letter sorter there. We've got the window. That's where the postmaster would be behind there, the post worker. We also have these antique mail bags that were loaded on trains. Also some Christmas cards draped across. We can't walk any further. There's a little gate here, but you can take a peek inside. Also decorated for Christmas. Decorations of seashells, a very Florida pioneer thing to do. Look at this, someone has made this yarn. It's almost like a garland, but made with twine and seashells. Very neat. Looks like someone's crafted stars. They've used a, like a uh, sewing spool there. Christmas in the country. A lot of pine cones in Florida, especially in central Florida. Look what they've done here. Neat. Kind of looks like Mickey Mouse a little bit. And shout out to my beautiful fiance. As you see, she is not here today. She is actually out on her own adventure at Magic Kingdom doing a very sentimental uh, Christmas video. Go check that out. I will put a link, if you're not already subscribed, to Chris, Chris the Girl. Make sure you check out her channel and check out that video. I'll put a link in the description below so you can do that. And we're just making our way. So much to see today. I'm sure at some point we'll have live entertainment. I see some folks setting up here behind this building. There's a stage. Maybe we'll have some bluegrass. We had that last time. They do have an information booth right over here. So if you have any questions about anything, you just walk right up there, just like you see at a theme park. Several folks behind me giving demonstrations that work here. There's also another map and a legend here. The same map they handed me, but just paper form. There's the rundown and also on the back side, a little history information. What is a Florida cracker? The term cracker dates at least as far back as Shakespeare, who coined it in the play King John. From the early 19th century, it was used to describe the hardy, self-reliant, and often poor pioneers who migrated from the north in search of a better life in the harsh Florida wilderness. Later, the term became associated with Florida's rugged cattlemen. So that, there you go. Also, cattle descended from stock left behind by the Spanish roamed freely in the Florida woodlands. Cow hunters used whips to flush the cattle from underbrush and drive them to ports for shipment north or to Cuba. Whips were not used to strike the cattle. They were popped in the air to make a crack sound to get the cattle moving. The sound traveled great distances, making whip an essential communication tool between cowmen. A commonly used 120 mile cattle drive route across the south central part of the state is known today as the Florida Cracker Trail. So there you go. Maybe I cleared up a little mystery for you, perhaps debunked some rumors. All right, it looks like the ban has began. A few at the same and they all agree. Looks like they're uh, testing the PA system right now. It sounds really good. And here we are. This historic original home. Looks like there's a couple of ladies on the porch in the pioneer dress. I remember this from last time. This was a really cool house. The pioneer split rail fence before this house. Nicely decorated. A little bit of history before the porch. This was the Smith house. Ooh. Testing the mics over there. 1894, Zephyr Hills, which is not too far from here, East Pasco County community came together and built this house 
as a wedding gift for Elizabeth Geiger and Daniel H. Smith using timber from the surrounding land and $15 in iron fittings. It's a really beautiful house, nice little cottage. Let's go take a look. They used to use thin strips of wood to do split seats, but uh, mine is, I'm using a man-made product that's a lot easier to work with. <laughs> And it's called fiber splint. Yeah, heck of a lot cheaper. A lot cheaper, <laughs> yeah. I have, people come and ask her sometimes, can you do splint or you know real rush? Uh, can't they all rush? Right all there? right. How much? How, how, it, but that's what it'll look oh, like. Oh, this is what it'll look like. Yeah, right that's there. A finished product. Did you do that yourself? Oh yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, little that's miniatures. Rush and hand caning, and those two pieces. Rush, hand, hand caning. caning, and this is over the round caning. Over the round. Yep, I do okay. all these different varieties. All right. The card in the oh, there's the card. Yeah, we'll shout that out. This chair, my my son pulled out of a cabin that was falling down up in North Carolina. It was falling off into a creek, and he leaned in, and his friend held his belt, and they drug this old red oak chair out. And oh, that's beautiful. You did a great job with we it. Did, we restripped it and then redid the seat, and that's probably been 25 years ago. Wow. Least. And it sits in my house and it's used, you can tell it's, it's been well loved. <laughs> oh corner. yeah, that adds to it. That's all part of it. That's character. Character, yeah, I like that. And we're going to take a peek inside the Smith house, just looking through this right window, quilt, bed. This looks like it would have been Mr. and Mrs. Smith's room. Also some kerosene lanterns over there. Each kid was assigned a color of yarn. Okay. And they had to follow their color of yarn to find their gift. Oh. That's cool. Uh -huh. It's a Christmas tradition. Color and they, they call it the spider web game. Oh, that's cute. Wow, I never heard of that. I tried it. My that's pretty cool like, Christmas tradition. <laughs> so you follow your color of yarn to your gift and it's hidden somewhere in the room. If you look down here, someone got a shirt. I guess so. Someone got some shoes. Looks like, did someone get a cell phone? No, that's a harmonica. I don't think that's a cell phone. <laughs> that's not 1895, 1894. Yeah, oh look, a Hershey's bar of chocolate. Shout out to Chris the girl, we love our Hershey's. Now here on the back porch of the Smith house, it looks like someone made a Christmas wreath right there. There's all kinds of demonstrations within every single structure that you go here today. It's very cool. Sachets with lavender? Yes. So we just pick out one of these? Any, any one you want. Okay. So we're going to pick out this. Okay, so put it on the other side. On this side. Yep. And then we're going to take a spoonful of lavender buds. Nice. Right in the middle. Okay, and I'm going to create That's, that right yeah. there. Okay, I'll do that. And I have a wee little bag of lavender. They said to put these in your shoes, maybe? Maybe stick this in there to defeat the odor. I'm going to give this to someone. I'll probably give this to Chris's mom, Kathy. I know she likes lavender. Merry Christmas. And right up there on the back side of the Smith's house, that's where I got the lavender. Those young ladies are doing this. And then back here, there's like a vendor. And then over here, there's another demonstration. Over to the left, this is like a photo opportunity. Yeah, look at this. Photo spot, I love that it has an old timey camera there. There you go. And then to the left, there's a demo going on over here. Let's check this out. Doing laundry? Yeah. You're doing laundry. I'm doing laundry. That's the old-fashioned right. way. It's a That's washboard. Right. So how does it work? Just like this? Yes. Yes. You, this is metal. This here, and sometimes it was glass. Okay. Oh, I didn't know and it was sometimes glass. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I'm doing it one-handed too, so I'm probably not That's doing a good job. <laughs> but what's this over here? Like a plunger? This. No, it's not a plunger. We didn't have indoor plunger. No. Yet. Okay. That that makes sense. So this is an agitator. By ah. the design, this really is the original agitator. Look how easy that is. I'm hardly look. I'm hardly moving it. Yeah, you are. It looks really it. easy. So if we filled that tub with water, threw it in. Now my job's a lot easier. I did it. We've got someone over here displaying pine needle baskets. Also selling them. There's so many over here. I also see some Christmas ornaments. Might do some Christmas shopping out here. Hello. These are absolutely beautiful. The, uh, wow. The 10? The, the, uh, Ooh, I like this little basket. 20? Yeah. These are beautiful. Good job. Got some holly in there. These baskets are awesome. There's a little <laughs> owl in there. 
And there's another owl over on the other side with red eyes. <laughs> oh, a flamingo. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Oh yeah, I did miss the little flamingo. <laughs> Thank you, flamingo. And of course, these are all handmade. Oh, that's beautiful. And those are dyed. Well, actually they are. 45 bucks. <laughs> and that's you right there? Didn't do you have a business yeah. card? I do. I only okay. sell here at the end. Only at Cracker, Cracker Country. Country. Baskets by Denise. Pine needle basket. Okay. I might make some purchases before I leave here today. So that's Denise over there who made the baskets. She said she will be out here all 12 days of the fair. You can purchase these baskets in person during the Florida State Fair coming up in January. Check out the decor here. Specifically, this Christmas tree. Now that is a Florida pine. Also, there's some presents down there. Very neat. And the band is going. I believe they're called Rekindled Bits of Grass. I really appreciate bluegrass. Now there's one road that leads up to heaven. The other is down below. And Jesus, my Savior, he guides me. He'll lead you to your crossroads. The old crossroads now is waiting. Which one? breakdown rekindle bits of grass ladies and gentlemen so good well soon your life will be over you're gonna have to face them old cross favorite parts of Christmas in the country here at Cracker Country, the bluegrass. This is gonna be here all day. You'll hear it in the background. We'll be back. And over here on the far, I would say, northwest side of the property, maybe northeast, the old church and the general store. We'll make our way in. But first, there's a little garden over here. Let's take a look at that. We're actually gonna enter the garden through the split rail fence. Looks like they've got a lot of stuff. There's St. John's Wart. Good for your lungs and your mental health. We've also got Horsetail Rush. Nice little wild garden here before the church. Beautiful, isn't it? I love how the sun's lighting it up. Ooh, I see something over here. I think I see a snake. Hold on. 
Oh no, it's a lizard. Wow, did you see that? What kind of lizard is that? It's got an orange tail. There it goes. Whoa. All right, be careful. I think this is some kind of a shed. Some kind of a woodshed. Hello, any lizards in there? There's a sign over here posted before this decoration here. It says Jewish families, Jewish families who lived in Florida in the 1800s celebrated Hanukkah, which means dedication. In Hebrew, the holiday begins on the 25th of Kislev on the Hebrew calendar and usually falls in November or December, often called the Festival of Lights. Hanukkah is celebrated with the lighting of the menorah, traditional food. It's just a brief history of Hanukkah. And it also talks about the dreidel there uh, from the German word, spin. Ooh, a graveyard. I always seem to find these. Cemetery. Now, I don't think there's any bodies buried out here at the Florida State Fairgrounds. This is kind of a poltergeist thing. They left them, probably replaced them, and just moved the tombstones. I'm talking about the bodies. They left those. Yeah, the sign just reads, this is an example. These tombstones have actually been replaced uh, by the families with current markers and donated here to the Living History Museum just to show you an example. It looks like this couple right here is perhaps the Smith family whose home we just walked through a moment ago. That is very neat. They died very young. It looks like Bessie died at 23 and uh, Paul died at 33. And the church got awfully busy all of a sudden. I think I'm gonna detour. There's several people inside there. I think we're gonna go to the general store first. Now I've been in here several times before. I think the last time I was with Chris the girl and we went in here during the Florida State Fair, just briefly. Now if memory serves me correctly, this used to sit in a Florida town called Fort White up near the Itchituckney River, one of my favorite rivers in all of Florida, up in Alachua County. This is beautiful. This was moved here several years ago actually there's some history over here to the right we'll check that out my memory serves me correct 1891 fort white florida communities often grew around general stores that sold necessities settlers could not produce for themselves items now stocked in the store could often be mailed ordered or for later delivery also decorated for christmas beautifully i love that the old grocery uh, letters there look at that jp I think that says J.P. Terry, maybe? Grocery? Perhaps that's what this used to be. It's like a, um, well, this is a living museum. I like it. So, this um, is back in 1898, but this store actually still operated up until 1988. 88, wow. Yeah. I was still so alive. So, an original store moved up here or down here from Fort White. Thank you. Awesomely, beautifully displayed, a recreation. And I've always been told that the cash register on the counter there, I believe that's original to the store. It says, please do not touch. There's a gym right there. Looks like they're selling Christmas ornaments in here as well. Also, wax dipped candles and candle holders. Look at that. I believe these are two bucks each. I read that online. An example of some of the goods you would buy at the old general store, some shaving stuff. We've got uh, soap. We've got tooth powder, not toothpaste. That would have stunk. We've got something called cream of roses there. We've got old bottles, looks like perfumes. There's an old safe in the corner. And if they don't have what you need in here, they've got the old Sears and Robux catalog. So you can order it. You can even order a home. Instruments, just picking random pages here. Weapons. Thank you. Thank you. Dishes. Buggies. Horses. <laughs> Harnesses. Saddles. That's always fun to look through one of these. On the back counter here is a banner they prepared. This is Merry Christmas. They have crayons, so we can sign it. Looks like a lot of folks have already done so. I'm going to sign it. Starting with the T. And there we go, far right hand corner. Yeah, and yeah. And Kept it simple. Know, you can't bring all of that. Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and I noticed this picture over here in this rocking chair. Miss Maud Sparkman Terry, storekeeper of J.R. Terry Grocery, 
from 1920 until 1988. This is a photo of this lady, Miss Maud, who worked here. Uh, often rocked in this chair as she visited with store customers. That's amazing. I'm glad they're paying tribute to her here. That's very special. We can get some Canadian night crawlers over here in the corner, I'm assuming. Worms. We've got worms. That's what we're calling it. All right, we're back at the church. This church is from Gretna, Florida. It was constructed in 1900. A church was often the first public building erected in a new community. Churches served as a place for worship, fellowship, weddings, funerals, and other community events as they still do today. I noticed right there the sign before the door. It says Granny and her mountain dulcimer. We might get some music inside. It's a beautiful day for this, isn't it? Still going in the background, straight ahead, the Cracker Country General Store. But first, now I remember, this is the schoolhouse. Someone has made a gingerbread yeah. banner. You wanna go down the ramp? Very creative, very clever, very simple. The sign here before the schoolhouse says, this building is from Castilia, Florida, 1912. Students from first through eighth grades were taught in the one-room schoolhouse. Often the oldest students would assist the teacher with lessons for the younger children. Some more beautiful Florida Christmas decorations as we're going up into the schoolhouse. This is cool, I like how they use the yellow flowers. Looks like we got the entrance to the right, the exit to the left. Yeah, this definitely looks like, ooh, Christmas tree right inside. Definitely looks like a schoolhouse. Very neato. Got the desks all set up with the chalkboards. Got the stove in the center to keep everyone warm. If need be in the winter, probably didn't fire up too much in the Florida winter. It's gotta be world history to see the globe right there. And just came out that door right there on the back side of the schoolhouse, there's a school bell. And over here, near the grist mill, there's a lot of folks making Christmas ornaments. You can make Christmas ornaments out here. And look at this, I remember doing this as a kid. They look like cookies almost they are they're sugar they're sugar cookies oh thank you looks like what several of them made here salt ornaments oh they are edible i like the smiley no, face whoever yeah, made that they're edible. and don't be alarmed this is not the only facility out here today but they have to show it the historic legendary american outhouse i might have to go and this is an actual outhouse from a place we've been to before on the channel la Cucci, 1935 not too far north of here the humble outhouse was a common sight in the rural areas well into the 20th century long after larger towns and cities had indoor plumbing now that wasn't too long ago my grandparents actually had outhouses as a kid so i don't know if we can peek inside but i'm gonna try it nope i think it's all locked up the back side of the schoolhouse over here everyone's making decorations it looks like you can just walk right up and do it so there's several tables set with jars of paint brushes and paint just showing you all the materials over here these are the actual ornaments looks like they're pre-made you just pick them out also there's some paint over here and the last time i was here with chris this memory just came back to me we went inside the general store right here we're about to go in there and I bought a book for my grandpa and I sent it to him. That just came back to me. Just wanted to say that. Uh, shout out to grandpa, I miss you. If my mom's watching, show grandpa I said that. Love you grandpa, miss you so much. Let's go inside, 
and see if I can find some Christmas gifts for someone. And this is one of the 13 original buildings out here, the general store. This was called the Rainy Store. It says, from the 1800s, from Ona, Florida. Most stores in rural communities were small by today's standard, consisting of one large room with a small storeroom and an office in the rear. The Rainy family lived in the north side and on the second floor of this building. So the family that owned this lived and worked out of the store. I did that once in my lifetime. My dad had a small fence business in Indiana and part of the house was the fence office and we lived in the other half. That was in Cumberland, Indiana back in the early 90s. Don't think I've ever mentioned that before. Yep, I lived where dad worked. I just want to shout out to the Cracker Country community out here, all the folks working out here today. You guys are doing a great job and I really appreciate the attention to detail, the education. I mean, just look at this stuff. This is beautiful. This took a lot of time and a lot of these folks out here working today look forward to this day every year and I'm glad to be here and be a part of it. So thank you for having us. I think I'm going to speak for everyone. I just did. <laughs> it's bumping in here. They've got old fashioned stuff like whoopee cushions, <laughs> hand shadows. They've got arrowheads. It's bumping in here. A lot of people shopping. They've got a lot of knickknacks. Old fashioned rock candy, which I, I used to get this all the time. A cracker barrel, old fashioned root beer candy. Yummy. And look at that. It's the Okahunka train station mug. 1095, that's very cool. There's all kinds of cool gifts in here. I'd say this store is very Cracker Barrel, very kind of Hallmark-ish. They even have a Florida honey, orange blossom honey, which they're also selling this outside. Cracker Country, mild chow chow. 395 for a jar. Also, here's a bigger jar. Oh, neat. Made in Tampa, Florida. Also, they have pickled beets here. They've got something called good and evil pickles. I like pickles. Cracker Country barbecue sauce. Vidalia onion mustard. Okay, this is cool. I might have to buy a lot of stuff for folks for Christmas today. Oh, snakes. They got snakes in here too. Watch out. Also in here you can purchase these handmade quilts and blankets. Also pioneer dresses that are handmade. Looks like these here are $35.95 each. Very pretty. Several pieces of clothing, handmade clothing in here, including straw hats. I see pillows, I see bags, I see bonnets. All can be purchased here. Linens, little uh, macrame things, uh, crochet things. All handmade. These little rugs, these handmade rugs, which are 20 bucks each, these are really pretty. These right here are shaped like uh, chickens. That's very cool. Several Christmas ornaments too as well. Look at these, all handmade. Look at this snowflake. Christmas ornaments. Okay, we've got two Christmas trees at home. I've gotta get gifts. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. And each of the historic buildings represented on these Christmas ornaments. Look at that. There's a schoolhouse we were just in and the general store. There's the corn crib. Also, there are several handmade Christmas stockings in here. $10 each. Everything in here so far, very fairly priced. And there's some hand dipped candles. Okay, some good stocking stuffers in here. $2 each for these hand dipped candles. Old fashioned cookbooks, recipe books. I see so many. I see old fashioned mushroom recipes, maple syrup, cookies, seafood, uh, persimmons. There's grandma's old fashioned recipes. All the way down. Old fashioned Christmas recipes. That's really cool. All kinds of cookbooks, even a zucchini cookbook there. And just notice that this recipe book right here, the Hearthside recipe book, is of the Connor Prairie Museum from Indiana. The one I mentioned earlier in the video, I think I mentioned it, but that was the Living History Museum I grew up going to in central Indiana. That's really cool to see this book here. They're also selling t-shirts in here. There's the Okahunka train station again. So they've got some like uh, Ford Cattleman crackers, different t-shirts, and bottled soda. They've got Coke, it looks like they've got orange soda and root beer in there too, grape soda. In the corner I found that they have grab bags, mystery bags, five bucks. Always appreciate a good mystery bag. I don't know if I'm gonna grab it today, I just wanted to show it. Several books in here. This is where I bought the book for my grandpa. Actually, specifically, I bought it right over here. It still might be in here. 
Oh no, I don't see it. Looks like they may have sold out of it. Yeah, okay, I'm glad I got it. And they're selling Christmas cards right there with the Doyle house. Okay, I bought several goodies. There are a couple goodies I can show you today. The rest are Christmas presents. I'll show you those, the ones I can't show you at the end of the video. It looks like the blacksmith's over here. No good cheating blacksmith. More mass here, the sound is deeper. Less mass here. Really loud. You'll see a lot. We don't have one, we should. We just have to make one. You see them wrapped with chains. The chain will help deaden the sound significantly. We'll have to get a chain for this candle. But, but the point is, see now I've started to draw out a four-sided taper. Quickly. So, that's the cow pie theory in a nutshell. Depending on your purpose, you can do a lot with just this multi-tool. All right, so I'm heading back to the middle over there where the bluegrass band was playing. It looks like there's some sort of a Christmas story time going. A gentleman reading a Christmas book. Also check this out. A lovely decoration. Simple star made with the palm branches. And again, those red berries. Oh, I must have just missed it. I guess this gentleman just wrapped up over here. Maybe we'll get him a little later, but just showing you. So many people out here right now. This is kind of the center. I'm gonna sweep by the Doyle house right there. Out there beyond, I was just at the blacksmith shop. All the way around, just giving you a 360 of the place. There's a Smith house. Over there's the, there's the needle baskets and the post office. Several things still to do here. The Doyle House. That's what I've been calling it. It's actually, his name was Doyle Carlton. This is the Carlton House. I may have said that wrong. Very popular as well right now. We're going to explore this one. A two-story home. This would have been a mansion back during its time. Love the garland up there. Decorated. It looks like that's all made with like burlap, yarn, string. Also, there's some down here on the bottom rail. There you go. I know there's a lot of folks out there that want to see the Christmas decor. Here's the sign. Albert Carlton and Martha W. McEwen began their married life in a log cabin in 1868. The Carltons, pioneers of the Florida cattle and citrus industries, built this two-story home with a distinctive dog trot hallway as their family grew to include 10 children. Their son Doyle E. Carlton, who was born in this house, served as Florida's governor from 1929 to 1933. And this was built in 1885 in Wachula, Florida. Going up the steps here, long hallway between both rooms. Very busy house. There's also a staircase which the ladies over there at the Smith house were telling me about and a small staircase right here on the front porch that goes up to the second story I believe it goes to the boys bedroom very narrow up towards that way and this is the long breezeway or hallway between both rooms left and right there's a photo of this home look at this this was uh, this was back in the 1920s this is this home, the Carlton House, at its original location in Wachula. And there's the family right there. And the first room on the left, through the hallway. Quick look here, it's decorated for Christmas. A lot of wicker chairs, rocking chairs, quilts. Over here to the right, there's a little Christmas tree with candles. Those are the same candles we saw in the general store. I like the star too, look at that star. To the other room, the room to the right, this would have been uh, the Carlton's bedroom, Mr. and Mrs. Carlton. A pretty good sized room. It's got several windows, lots of lighting. Also a beautiful historic home. And here is a family picture photograph of Albert and Martha Carlton with their nine children 
that lived in this home. This is very cool. So, 1885 is when this litter began. Look at them. And I believe they had, out of nine children, they had one girl. One girl, and there she is right there. And she had her own bedroom all to herself in the upstairs. So nine boys, or sorry, eight boys in one room and one girl in the, she had her room to herself, which she, she deserved. I can't imagine growing up with uh, eight sisters. So <laughs> I get it. And there you go, her name was Ella. And this was her private staircase up to her room. Look at that. I wish we could go up there, but. Ella had her own room. That's amazing. Thought just occurred to me. Recently we added a electromagnetic pulse meter, a ghost meter, to the channel. I never thought about bringing it out here. Now these are not the original locations, but sometimes the spears stick with the building. So, I don't know, is it haunted? Hmm, should have brought that meter. Very spacious home, there's the back porch. And in the back, there's the window right there. This is the kitchen. A lot of folks in there turning butter right now. We're about to do that. Oh, look, a mirror. Hello. Would I like to turn butter? Yes, I would. All right, I'm gonna try this. Can I do it one-handed? Yeah, I can. Probably not as effective, but. Oh, wow, that's really smooth. And the kitchen, of course, had its own fireplace. Look at this, decorated for Christmas. That is the far side of the room. Here is the table, and over that way. Okay, so this is more the dining area. The kitchen is to the room to my left. Okay, this is the dining room area. And here's the kitchen, and oh, wow, crackers. Crackers with butter on them. Look at that, yeah, oh, wow, yeah, this is, yeah. uh -huh. you know me. That's one of my favorite snacks <laughs> Oh. since I was a kid. The butter in Cracker Country is the best ever. Homemade butter? Homemade butter. All right, I'm gonna try this out in the kitchen. Never thought I would eat a cracker at Cracker Country. It's good, and now I can go home. Not just yet though, still more to see. Came out of the door right there, that was the kitchen. And right outside the back of the house, often times, there was a well. And this one decorated for Christmas as well. Please do not touch. I'm very close though, so you can see. Look at that. Made with all those berries and those kind of look like peppers there. Nice wreath made. They've really outdone themselves out here. I remember coming out here five years ago and I think I, I don't remember there being this many decorations. So good job, Cracker Country. There's a garden, a rose garden. Chris the girl would love this. Actually, I showed her this before during the county or uh, the state fair, we came out here. You can see this as well when you come out here to the state fair, all these plants, that's Dutchman's pipe, these rose bushes. Oh yeah. Looks like we have some color greens out there. I see some cabbage. You can walk through here. This is really cool. Yeah, let's walk through the garden. Looks like this is where you enter. Looks like we have an alleyway of herbs. Wow, a little bit, yeah. Some time? Yeah, I have a little time. A little time? <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Check this out. Got mustard greens, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli. I see some tomato plants over there, maybe. They also grow, I believe, green beans the same way. But these vines grow up these strings here. These are peas. I remember my uh, uncle growing green beans the same way when I was a kid. Oh. Oh, goose fight. Okay, let's go check out the geese. Ah, but first I had to stop and smell the roses. I think those are geese, or are those ducks? They look like those, are, that's definitely a goose. Duck, duck, goose. And I remember one time there being a little more animals out here. I think these geese are the only two, but as you can see, they have this area. Where they can have some critters. Just to show you what's going on again, there's the store where I bought all the goodies. That is the blacksmith shop. This is a leather shop. That is the Carlton house. Over there, we'll get there in a second, but that's where you can actually make candles yourself, wax dip candles. And then over here, this building, just in case you were wondering, those are the facilities, those are the restrooms. 
I will pause for the cause. And this building right here, another one of the original buildings that was brought here to Cracker Country, the Corn Crib, AKA a shed or a barn. This is where they would store the feed. Also the tools, nice little kettle there, or cauldron. And this corn crib came from Berea, Florida. A sign here on the split rail farm fence that says Ireland. In the 18th and 19th centuries in Ireland, a single white candle was placed in the window to signal the local priest that a Catholic mass was welcome in the home for Christmas. Immigrants brought this tradition with them to America and it survives today. Irish farmers would mark the approach of Christmas by cleaning and whitewashing all the buildings on their property from the barn to the home to the smallest outhouse. Well, there you go. I didn't catch this before, but on this side of the blacksmith shop, the biggest wreath of the day so far. Really nice. And there's a line over here just to show you. I believe it's, I think it's four bucks and you can dip your own candles. Now, we saw a few of these already, but now I'm gonna show you where these candles were made. No, we start with the string. You start with the string? Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. We have to dip them and dip them and get them started. Oh, just like that? Yeah. Okay. Over in the corner, several of the candles drying along the wall. There's the basin the hot wax that you dip it in. There's someone doing it over there right now. All right, young man, what are you gonna do with your rope? All right, it looks like candles are two dollars. No. And you can also you make a rope, rope as these gentlemen are demonstrating over here for two dollars. And you can dye it. Oh, indigo dye it for two additional dollars. An interesting process here. Also, they've made a tree. Couldn't help but notice the Christmas tree made on the wall over there and it's got a star all made of rope. All right, so correction, I thought you could pay to dye, indigo dye the rope. They're actually doing indigo dyeing of cloth over here. An entire station, look at this. Never seen this done before. Here you go, freshly made over here, drying. Very tie-dye looking, very blue, indigo. Looks like the dye is in that basin over there and you just pick your cloth. And I believe you use like a clothespin to dip it in there. And from this angle, the Carlton house looks gigantic, doesn't it? Beautiful. Good old fashioned potato sack race. Underway over here. <laughs> Man, who remembers doing that? I mean, I do. That was fun. And right here, this building behind me is the Florida Governor Hall of Fame. Let's take a look inside. It's a pretty impressive structure as well. I don't think this is an original building. I think this was a built structure, but it houses the Hall of Fame. And it looks like they are showing silent pictures right now. This is cool. All the Florida governors pictured along the wall including the very first, Andrew Jackson. Front row, ain't no row like the front row, baby. Looks like this is a Christmas movie, silent movie. Really Santa in the North Pole. Oh, I see the reindeer. Papa Jijo. This could very well be the first ever Christmas movie. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, Donner and Blitzen. Oh wow, that's neat. That must be like a miniature. Oh, it looks so cool. <laughs> hey, I've seen worse in DC movies. Okay, so the movie just ended and we were told that it was made in 1905. It's called The Night Before Christmas. They're just looping it. Okay, that was a relaxing time inside that building. Watching silent Christmas movies. I didn't know I always wanted to do that until I did that, that was fun. Just noticed this water thing over here. Whoa, it works. Oh, gotta change my socks. And we have gone a full circle. There's still some other things to see that I didn't show within the inner circle, but I did not show the caboose over here on the far side of the Okahunka train station. 
There's also a loading dock, several wagons and barrels, some more stuff up on the porch. Looks like there's a demonstration. I'll go there in a second, but I wanted to go inside the caboose. This looks like a Atlantic coastline caboose. Nice. And it's not open, but I can peek through the window. Very great shape. Check it out. Looks like we're making ornaments over here. Nice, a lot of tin foil ornaments. Yeah. So they are made out of old Christmas cards and tin foil. Okay. Old Don't Christmas shake cards. Everyone's doing arts and crafts and they were tin recyclers foil. back then. I like it. Probably more than us. Doing a good job there. Here's some of the old Christmas cards. All right, I still gotta buy a few Christmas gifts and there's a couple things we haven't seen yet. And I remember the last time I was out here for uh, Cracker Country Christmas, there was a couple, I believe, horses in here, or maybe a mule. And they were going around this device here. This is a churner. Uh, specifically, uh, they would use these. I've seen these, we've shared them before throughout the Roadside Attraction Series for churning sugar cane. Cane mill and syrup kettle. So not just cane, also syrup, sugar cane syrup was the main sweetener used in Pioneer, Florida. Cooking the long segmented cane stalks are fed into grinding cogs in the mill, which crush the stalks and release the juice. Juice, juice is boiled over a fire in a large iron kettle until it thickens into syrup. Now there's where the fire and the kettle are kept. Now check this out. They're selling all kinds of beeswax candles out here. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Okay. I see some items here that I'm going to have to pick up for a special someone at home. These are absolutely beautiful. Check these out. Also selling orange blossom honey. Aiken family. Since 1997. So the candles are edible. Homemade, all made from a local beekeeper. Aiken, right? Yep. Check them out. You got you got like a Facebook or anything? Yeah, I'm on Facebook. On yeah, Facebook? It's on the labels. It's right on the labels. Okay, yeah, there's all your information right there. You always told me that you would love me. That you would never go away. Now you're correct. Sweetheart, she's on the other side of you. <laughs> and many of you may be surprised, as I was when I first learned that the Christmas holiday was not a federal holiday until after the Civil War. Christmas Day, 1870, was our first one. And there you have it. That was Cracker Country. Again, as I pointed out, going in, there's a lot of demos out here. I see Hillsborough County Sheriff over there. I see some fair food. Of course, we got pizza. So much fun. I strongly recommend this event once a year. Please check out the website if you're interested in coming out uh, next year for the Christmas event. Also, you can come out here during the Florida State Fair. So I bought a lot of goodies in here today. All right, guys. Unfortunately, this is going to be the end of it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. My experience out here at Cracker Country. Please come check them out. Again, there'll be a website in the description below. Also, if it was your first time here, if you enjoyed today's video, please feel free to subscribe uh, below. I have a Florida Roadside Attractions playlist on the main page of my YouTube. I will add this video to it. It being Florida, it being roadside, it being fun. 
thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I hope everyone has a happy holiday, a Merry Christmas, uh, whatever you celebrate out there. I just hope you make this time uh, of year special for your family. And, um, you know, tell someone you love them. I really, really, really enjoy this Christmas event. I, I wish to come out, uh, out here more. I can't believe I waited four years to get back out here. Um, the music, the people, the gifts, uh, just the whole vibe, um, the pioneer days. I, I just really enjoyed it. And I'm thankful that I could come out here today and bring you guys. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm gonna wrap it up, head on back home. There's always much ahead. I'll see you next time. Almost forgot. Know that you're awesome. Know that you're loved. And no matter who you are, what you're going through, just know there's always much ahead. And I almost forgot something else. I said I would show you something I bought in there. I got this ornament to add to our Christmas tree for this Christmas at home. Cracker country. All right, just had to show you that. That kind of looks like the tree I showed in the beginning, the live oak. Doesn't look like a duck though. All right guys, much ahead. See you next time.